I was so relieved because I was so sick for so long and someone finally had a name and a disease for what was causing all of my symptoms. It was relief. It was a total relief to find a name for what was plaguing her. Um, unfortunately, it was only part of what was going on with her and we don't have a total diagnosis yet. It was a depressing, shocking, sad, scary, lonely, and very confusing time in my life. I had suffered for three years before they could figure out what this mystery disease was. I was first diagnosed with uh, primary immunodeficiency disease when I was around 18 years old. It's just a really big relief because I had been so sick for so long and no doctor could figure out what was wrong with me. Um, the toughest part of the diagnosis, I think, that was actually a relief to me because, again, I had known something was wrong, but I was in denial. I didn't, I wanted my child, I wanted a reason for his issues, but I really didn't want him to have a disease. Having that diagnosis basically put me into a bit of a denial state. Just, oh no, you know, okay, so he has those symptoms, but it's no big deal. Unfortunately, the next five years of his life, we were in and out of hospitals. And he had 27 mandatory physician appointments a year. So my d denial went, <laughs> went away rather quickly. Diagnosis, um, it was just such a shock. We weren't expecting it and we were, we were devastated. I mean, on the one hand here, you have this perfect child that is laughing and playing. And then on the other hand, someone says, well, and now he's dying. And, you know, it's just hard to mix those two together. You, you hardly function for a little while, but then you slowly start to take it in and realize you've got to love him and you've also got to fight. In September 2009, myself and my wife believed our, our little girl had just epilepsy. And then we were told that she had a very rare disease called Batten disease. Um, our little girl, Saoirse, I uh, was four years old at the time and we were given no information. It was a very lonely time when we were told. All we were told is that she was going to die and had we any questions. At that time, lots of questions would come into your mind but you just can't get them out. But we did look for information and it led to us finding out that there's very little information within the medical system, within the health service or within the general public domain when it comes to rare disease. Everything from, you know, trying to figure out how I'm going to be able to work and make a living, to friendships and relationships, um, and dealing with, you know, just absence and time of illness, uh, and, and trying to catch up all the time. You know, I'm able to work now and have friendships and relationships and, you know, become independent, which is kind of a struggle to maintain, which I think is my greatest obstacle, but I'm working through it. Education. I think that the education of our families and our friends, um, that's a big obstacle because, you know, when people tell you, you know, that there's no name, they don't necessarily believe that there's anything wrong. My biggest obstacle has been accepting my physical limitations and adjusting to the fact that I cannot be exposed to temperatures that are below 68 degrees. I think the biggest obstacle is having to fight um, all the time for your son, having to have to communicate all the time what his needs are. And additionally, because there's no specific treatment, we we have a treatment plan, but every child is unique in their own way and has their own issues, so to speak, even as a subset within those treatment plans. The slow pace of research. It's so long for it to go from basic research to translational research to the clinic. The hardest part, I think, is that we see that it's possible in our children's lifetime, that it's not just some far off thing, that it actually can happen and their lives actually could be saved. We realize that, you know, for every year that we don't find a cure or a treatment that can save their life, that's one year less that we have of them. So that's the hardest part right now, is just trying to save their life within their lifetime. Uh, after being told that our, our girl was going to die, uh, the biggest obstacle we had was information. Uh, 
no one could give us real solid information. There was no patient support groups for this condition. And there was no uh, credible information coming from the doctors. With these obstacles led us to fight and start fighting for other parents um, in the most constructive way we could. We started a, a non-profit charitable organization and we started this so that no other parent uh, would be left alone or would be left without the information that they need to assist them in, in trying to cope with this new news. If I were to share my experience with any parent or caregiver, it would be to express to them the importance of communicating with your physician, not being afraid to speak up, not being afraid to say, hey, I'm questioning you, and also encourage your physicians to communicate with you and, and allow you to teach them. I guess what I would say would be to have humor about the situation if you can. Just try not to get too bogged down by uh, the symptoms and, and um, try to maintain a normal life. I would say listen to your own body and make sure that your doctors listen to what you have to say. You are never alone when you have a rare disease. There is a tremendous amount of supporting information on social media, so ask a lot of questions. Someone will reach out and help you. Live and uh, laugh and um, learn as much as you can about the disease that your, your child has. And you have to show no fear in front of the sufferer because it's so important to be steady and to, to keep you in. I've learned that we are all living with, with our own issues and no matter what we have to deal with, um, we need to be respectful of every individual for the things that they have going on in their life. The biggest thing I've really learned from having a child with a rare disease is just to have a good support system around you and to really love your child because in the end that's that's really what matters. If you spend so much time fighting all the time and miss what is so great about them and what's so wonderful and what gives you joy, then there really wasn't any point anyway. While in your own condition you might be uh, unique or you might be one of only a handful of people in your, ho your own country or state, it is uh, the rare disease community at large which has to come together and um, do good and support each other. Never give up hope. We were told when our daughter was diagnosed that there was no hope that she was going to die. But then when we went exploring via the internet, we located some credible places for good information. And we actually found medical treatment trials. If we all work together, fundraise and create awareness through social media and the internet, then I believe that we can definitely make a difference. Share your knowledge with other people, find a support group, and never give up hope, ever give up hope.